In the previous part of this video series, I set up the combustion models and added the appropriate boundary conditions. In this part, I will show you how to set up the initial conditions and simulation controls. The initialization of a multi-cylinder case like this one can be a bit convoluted since each cylinder is in a different phase of the engine cycle regardless of when the simulation is started. This chart describes the initial state of each cylinder at a crank angle of 0 degrees from the cylinder 1 time frame. The default initialization conditions are used to initialize the flow in the cylinder which contains the primary material point. This cylinder, the reference cylinder, is called cylinder 1 as mentioned before. At the starting crank angle, cylinder 1 is beginning the expansion stroke. Thus, the flow is assumed to consist of complete combustion products and the pressure and the temperature are expected to be at their peak values. Cylinder 2 is at the bottom dead center during the initial crank angle, about to begin the exhaust stroke. I will use the Cylinder 2 reference frame to locate the Cylinder 2 initialization condition. Again, the flow is assumed to consist of complete combustion products, but the temperature and pressure are considered to be lower than those seen in Cylinder 1. To quickly create the Cylinder 3 initialization condition, I will copy and paste this condition and then change the reference frame. Cylinder 3 is at the bottom dead center, about to begin the compression stroke, therefore the flow is assumed to consist of a stoichiometric mixture of fuel and air. Since cylinder 3 is likely in equilibrium with the intake manifold, the cylinder is considered to be at the same temperature and pressure as the intake manifold. Again, I will copy this condition and change the reference frame to create the cylinder 4 initialization condition. Cylinder 4 is at the top dead center during the starting crank angle, about to intake the fuel-air mixture. The flow is considered to be composed of mostly combustion products, and the temperature and pressure are approximately 600 Kelvin and 1 bar, respectively. The other initialization conditions pertain to the intake manifold, exhaust manifold 1, and exhaust manifold 2. The set location of the intake manifold initialization condition is an arbitrary point within the intake manifold. The flow within the manifold consists of a stoichiometric mixture of air and fuel. In contrast, the flow in each exhaust manifold is considered to consist of complete combustion products only. With these settings, the simulation can be fully initialized. Now to add some simulation controls. This simulation will utilize the crank angle base solver and will be run for two complete engine cycles at 2000 RPM. The max simulation time step will be 10 microseconds. The chemistry will only be solved during the following crank angle interval. Note that this crank angle interval is applied to each cylinder using the corresponding local time frame. The simulation is now ready for submission to the solver. This concludes this video series showing you how to set up a multi-cylinder simulation using ANSYS Forte.